150 knots. The submarines are astonished by the depth at which the unidentified craft is moving, 20,000 feet underwater. It gave the acoustic signature of a single propeller uh, type of motion through the water, and uh, it was tracked at depths down to 20,000 feet, whereas a typical crush, crush depth for a submarine would be 7,000 feet. So this thing, whatever it was, was exceeding the technical capabilities of uh, submarines at that time and even today. The vessel is tracked for almost four days by the entire carrier group. The object would reportedly propel away at impossible speeds and then stop and rest, allowing for continued tracking by the Navy. Reports about this event were sent back to Sinclair Fleet Headquarters in Norfolk, Virginia. However, an official determination into what was seen on sonar that afternoon was never made. But according to reports, the Navy lost track of the craft after midnight on the fourth day. It was never picked up on sonar again. Nobody advanced a theory as to how something could move that fast. We have reports of USOs going into and out of the water, but we don't have any of the technical data. Flying saucers that are above the ground, people see them. But what's underwater, the Navy sees it. And the Navy isn't talking about what it's doing. Like. Inflating an immense balloon aboard the USS Norton Sound, the Navy prepares for further study of the elusive cosmic rays somewhere in the Pacific. That's the news. A secondary consideration clears up the mystery of the so-called flying saucers. For it is these monsters which rise 19 miles and attain diameters of 100 feet that have been mistaken for the apparitions called flying saucers. At great altitudes, they tell us, these elongated enormities flatten out like plates. Mystery ended. But reports from around the world continue. Another extraordinary case is reported in the international press beginning on November 11th, 1972. A fast-moving submarine-like object is picked up on sonar in the Sonja Fjord off the west coast of Norway by the Norwegian Navy, which hunts it for two weeks. A fleet of surface ships and specially equipped sub-hunter helicopters are assembled to find the object. On November 20th, 1972, the USO is seen visually for the first time. It was described as being a massive, silent, cigar-shaped object. A Navy ship promptly fires its guns and torpedoes at the craft. Some ship actually saw it on the surface and fired at it, but it dived, and then they started dropping depth charges. Although all the articles treat this as a submarine, the fact of the matter is nobody was able to identify it as a submarine. After tracking the object for almost two weeks, the Navy devises and executes a plan to blockade the fjord and trap the USO. They tried to seal off this fjord so nothing could get in or out. Nevertheless, after 14 or 15 days, this thing disappeared. So that, that may mean that this object, whatever it was, that was tracked by the Navy was not a submarine at all, but uh, an unidentified submerged object. Coming up. Did Christopher Columbus and his crew witness USOs flying into and out of the Atlantic on October 11th, 1492? One of the earlier cases comes all the way back from the day before Columbus Day in 1492, before there was a Columbus Day. And it happened on the Santa Maria. October 11th, 1492, 10 p.m. A calm, clear night. Christopher Columbus and his crew move slowly across one of the deepest ravines of the Atlantic and through the Bermuda Triangle. Below them is almost four miles of water. Suddenly, unearthly lights are seen flashing across the bottom of the ocean. One of the earlier cases comes all the way back from the day before Columbus Day in 1492, before there was a Columbus Day. And it happened on the Santa Maria. This person's name was Gutierrez. And Gutierrez was on the Santa Maria with Christopher Columbus and noticed an object rising out of the water, a disc-shaped object. A great flash of light with a level of brilliance unlike anything known at the time suddenly erupts from the sea to the sky, startling Columbus and his crew of 120 aboard the three-ship Spanish fleet. 
In less than five hours, they would discover the new world. And Christopher Columbus maintained a log in the ship. It describes what could be interpreted as a UFO event. They saw in the description given in, in the log book the flickering of a wax candle going up and down in the night. It, it couldn't have been a campfire on ground because it was beyond the horizon. This possible USO incident is more than just legend and lore. For the first time ever, original text from Columbus's log has been made available to the History Channel by archivists at Fordham University, custodian of a rare handwritten copy of the journal. The October 11th, 1492 sighting was not an isolated occurrence. Over the two-month journey, Columbus's log exhibits a consistent pattern of cryptically reported peculiar incidents, including unexplained sightings and unusual events in outer space. The following is from an entry on September 10th, 1492, the halfway point of the voyage. The crew of the Nina stated they had seen a garajo and a water wagtail, but these birds never go farther than 25 leagues from the land. From an entry September 11th, 1492. Saw a large fragment of the mast of a vessel, apparently of 120 tons, but could not pick it up. Entries on both September 17th and September 20th indicate that stars or other unidentified lights in the sky are seen to move. The cause was that the star moved from its place, but the needles remained stationary. And from the infamous entry of October 11th. The Admiral, at 10 o'clock that evening, standing on the quarterdeck, saw a light. Calling to Pero Guterres, he told him he saw a light and bid him look that way, which he did and saw it. The Admiral again perceived it once or twice, appearing like the light of a wax candle moving up and down. Is it possible that these strange events, recorded during the most fabled nautical journey in history, were the result of otherworldly vessels tracking Columbus's fleet? Some suggest, however, that any interpretations or rationalizations that might be gleaned from Columbus's log are not the whole truth. If Christopher Columbus saw a strange thing come out of the water, fly around his ship and then take off, would he have told anybody about it? They'd have locked him up in the brig instantly. The guy's crazy, because things can't do that. One of the earliest USO reports comes from 329 BC. After witnessing what he described as shining shield-like objects flying into and out of the Jaxartes River in India, Alexander the Great was so convinced that he witnessed otherworldly vessels, he spent the final six years of his life searching for evidence of these objects in a diving bell, believed to be the world's first submarine. Some conclude, however, that Alexander's underwater adventures had a greater goal, finding and conquering the one kingdom that had eluded him, Atlantis. Well, Atlantis first enters literary history in the philosophical dialogues of Plato. These are the Timaeus and the Critias. The gods, bothered by the attitude of the Atlanteans, decided to destroy Atlantis. In one day and one night, they destroyed it with a cataclysm, and it sank. To this day, researchers continue to speculate about Atlantis as a hub of USO activity. The legend of Atlantis definitely is based on 